Mark, how's it going today? Oh, it's a blessed day today. It's so nice to talk to you, Billy. It's great to talk with you, and we are here to talk about Rockin' on Heaven's Door. I want to dive all into the series, why it was created, uh, but I have to ask you first and foremost, you have been in the entertainment space for a long time now, and I'm just, I love hearing people's stories of how they got into the space, so what was, what was your journey into entertainment? Well, for me, uh, I joined Paramount Pictures, and the day I drove through the gates in Hollywood at 55, 55 Melrose, my life changed forever. I forever was in love with the entertainment industry and was blessed to work with so many shows and movies that were so successful and entertained so many people. So for me, it was amazing. And you know, I always think that we're on a journey that God puts us on a path. We never know what that path will be. But when we're on that path, if you take a minute to just breathe in what we're seeing, we see the majesty of God in every step in our life. You know, it's interesting hearing you say that too, because a lot of people, and we know that this is not the case. There, are, there are a lot of projects coming out of Hollywood that are faith based, and there are a lot of Christians in Hollywood. But the assumption is that it's very hard to be a believer in Hollywood. You are somebody who's done so much in, in the space. How would you respond to that critique that people might have outside, you know, just thinking, oh, you can't really be a Christian in Hollywood? Well, true. I was, um, I had never read the Bible. And so I was doing work in China and somebody gave me a Bible to read. And it was from reading the word that I came to my faith. And so for me, I accepted Christ in China on a train going from Harbin to Beijing, about a 10 and a half hour train ride, and about four and a half hours into it, I accepted Christ. Wow. So you picked up the yeah. Bible, you started reading it yeah. on the train, and you became a Christian. Yeah. And what was amazing for me was that I had never read the Bible, right? I mean, I'd studied film. I was an English major. The film college fell underneath that. I felt I read and written papers on all the great movies, all the great, you know, different uh, classics that had ever been written, but I'd never read the Bible. And I couldn't believe when I started reading it that I'd never read it. And the more I read it and the more that I heard the word, the more it, it, it just, it changed my life. So yes, I believe in Hollywood at any time somebody can pick up a Bible and read it. And for me, when I did, it changed my life forever. Well, and that's, and that's the incredible thing too, because we're here talking about, you know, rocking on heaven's door and the fact that, you know, Hollywood is, a, it's a tough space. There are lots of tough spaces for Christians in the world and Hollywood is, is one of them, but there are so many opportunities now in Hollywood, as we've seen through Pure Flicks and as we've seen through projects like Rockin' On Heaven's Door, which um, dropped on the Pure Flicks platform at the end of December and is available now for people to watch. Uh, but but my you know question to you, you mentioned your life changed, and then I really want to dive into the series. But how how did your life change after that? Just give us that juxtaposition from before that train ride to after. I think we're all on a journey. And obviously being in China, I was on a big journey. And the change for me was one of love in my heart. That it was eternal love in my heart that I wanted to love others instead of worrying about how it affected me. And it, I think the walk and the fruits of that was that my heart was so compassionate for others and wanting to help others. And I think when Jesus walks into your heart, love never leaves it. Mm, that's, that is a powerful word. And obviously knowing the amount of time you spent working at Paramount and working in Hollywood, what, what was it that led up to this project rocking on heaven's door? Take us through sort of the impetus for that really brought this series to us. Sure. So rocking on heaven's door is we're so excited that the public can actually see this. This is really supposed to be something done that originally was done for something special for people inside the music entertainment industry. This was really an inside thing that you're seeing. This was really done with the heart to help people as we were trying to get through a lot of the challenges that are facing us in the world, specifically even during the pandemic. So Hope 20 was formed by Chad Peterson 
which came underneath ACT, and ACT is Artist and Christian Tennis Testimony. So based out of Nashville, it was to help all the musical artists who were out performing and touring out of eight counties around Nashville. And the idea was that Hope 20 had the opportunity to help artists and the people touring that were struggling during the pandemic and provide a lot of different services from helping with rent, from helping with mortgages. Um, there was also uh, food that was offered and there was a lot of partnerships that were formed with a lot of venues and everybody from Bluebird Cat Cafe and Third and Lindsay and Puckets and everybody jumped in to help. And then there was a whole online curriculum that was developed to help artists learn how to maybe monetize. There's a gentleman that's part of Hope 20 and his name is Lauren Johnson. And he's a leader in Atmos Music, which is atmospheric sound. It's the future. So if you go to any of your platforms now, you're going to start to see atmospheric music. He just did over Christmas time, he just did Mariah Carey's new Christmas song. So atmospheric music is something a lot of artists don't know about, but if they look at their, their catalog and their library, they can maybe monetize it by putting it into Atmos. So whether it was Lauren, whether it was Sharon, who does all the touring uh, with the artists, whether it was Bob Ponsworth and uh, his wife, Mary Barrett, whether it was uh, Lauren Johnson's wife, Christine, or it was Chad Peterson, this whole group came together and they reached out and asked if I would help with this. And, and I was I was more than well willing to help. I had uh, run a studio in Nashville. And so my heart really went out to the people in Nashville. And so we began this uh, process of helping. And we thought, OK, well, what if we sat down with some artists that they could relate to people in the industry? Like we all like to be entertained, but we don't think of the lives that are affected when they're out there. And when you get an opportunity to really understand this, you realize that we take live music for granted. And, and Hope 20 also helped people in TV and film within the eight county area of Nashville, Franklin, et cetera, but also helped the Nashville, um, the, the Nashville Symphony. So we were helping all those artists that were affected. But Hope 20 gave this opportunity where we could say, hey, look, there are some stories of people like you who are affected and maybe what they'll say to you from an artist's perspective, a performer, an acclaimed artist talking to you saying, hey, this is how I got through. I got through with my faith and this faith carried me through. We're a family, we're on the road. God is always there with you. We together will get through it. We saw what we were recording and we had a award-winning cinematographer who's given his time named Curtis Graham, who is just amazing. And in fact, he's got a movie that's on pure with the investigator. He's just, he's an incredible person, but more incredible is his faith. And so he wanted to join on this journey with me and have us try to tell some of these stories. And when we started looking at it, we're like, this is incredible, not, not only to the people within our industry that this was supposed to be shown to, the thought was it would be great if the public could see it. And in yeah. each uh, one of these episodes, everybody shares their favorite Bible verse. And so I think as you, you drop into these episodes, I think you're going to be inspired by how each one of these artists have taken care of the people within them. Because when people go out on tour, it's a lot of people that are involved. It's more than just the person that's in lead. And I think from that, it's been, it's yeah. been annoying. Well, you know, the, we always talk about this at Pure Flix, the, the public and the people watching this right now, they want to know the details, the behind the scenes, how things happen and not just how they happen, but who people really are. You know, you it's one thing to hear a song or to watch a music video. Um, those seem to be fewer and far between these days or, you know, to to interact in some way with a performer. But to know who they are is another thing. And I don't think we get really good opportunities, especially in the Christian space, to really look behind that wall to understand the journey, the journey to faith, what faith means to them, how they navigate success, right? And hold on to humility and hold on to biblical truth. I mean, there's so much there uh, that a series like Rocking on Heaven's Door really opens you up to. Now, for you, what was the thing that most surprised you about these stories as you were sort of exploring them and asking the questions? It's a good question. Uh, Jonathan Cain, 
my gosh, who didn't sing to or walk out to one of Journey's songs <laughs> at, at some point? And Journey was just last fall was playing. You know, they're on tour, but they're they're playing like the sold out places. And but we think of faithfully. We think of the different songs that he had. And don't stop believing. I think it's a great. We always talk about our faith, right? That our faith will get us through. And don't stop believing. Surprised me because it was actually something that Jonathan Cain's dad said to him. So the story behind that, the story behind how that became an inspiration. I think I looked at Jonathan Cain's faith, and I'm blown away. I mean, his who he is and his walk. He is such, he's a creative giant, but gosh, is he not walking for Christ? And, and so when you when when I heard Jonathan Cain, I learned so much about his whole story because before Journey was the babies and bad English. And so it slows a journey and then his faith just goes on fire and he puts out music that is just incredibly faith inspiring. Toby Mack, come on, like he, he defines what a leader is in our industry. Do you want to know what a leader is? Listen to Toby Mack. Not only does he lead with faith, my gosh, who wouldn't want to work with Toby Mac? It's, well, and see, uh, that's the thing. People you, don't know, right? You only know the public figure that you see, which yeah. is what's so unique about this is that you're giving us this view in to who the people are so that we get a better sense. And that's one of the things for me as a journalist that I've always loved is getting to tell people's stories because, again, people want to understand it. And it's encouraging to people to hear these stories and to hear these journeys and to hear the struggles and the triumphs. What was one thing for you that you kind of walked away from this project feeling in terms of your faith? You know, did it have any impact on your, uh, on your faith on maybe the things you were thinking about at the time? I'm curious because when, when you get a chance to do a project like this, it tends to, to make a mark on you. All of our guests that we've had have changed my life. I'm inspired by their favorite verse. I actually looked up verses that I didn't know, and I was inspired when they told me that that was a favorite that was they were calling on. But each one, whether uh, you know, it was Jonathan Cain, as we just talked about, or Toby Mac and Melinda Doolittle, each one gave me something to look at life a little bit differently. And I think it will give you the tools and maybe a few nuggets that you can carry along with you. Melinda's a phenomenal story, and a lot of people know her from American Idol. But good gosh, if you look at the roots and how deep they go, and how she was brought up, and how she lives a life, and, and not and and she shares with that. She even shares with the way her mom used to teach her about you know, if she wanted to say something negative, she had to get three positives before she gave a negative about <laughs> anything or anyone. That's and a good. I, that is a good lesson, right? <laughs> Isn't that true? We could all benefit from that. We could. So I think what I took away was, wow, you know, the definition of faith is that you're walking at both on and off stage. But there are also some powerful things that are said. If you're if you're a creative at all, I don't care what your discipline is, but if you find yourself creative and you're out there, listen to what these artists are saying and you'll be inspired. Jonathan Cain said something really powerful about performing. And he said, I stood on stage and said, I, I just, I, I deserve to be here. I, I've worked to be at this point. How many times do we think we're not worthy, but we are within Christ, but our, we're not worthy to be here. And he was like, I, I'm here. But then he followed it up with is each night when you do something and perform, you need to bring the very best you can and a little something different because everybody took some of their money to come see you perform and made a big effort to be there. So bring it. And I think it's a reminder that when we're in a craft of creative and we want to entertain, we got to bring our very best. But maybe that's true in life. Maybe it's true in relationships. We need to bring our very best. And I think I walked away with saying, yes, that's what it looks like. It looks like walking in Christ, walking in love, looking for the positive, not the negative. And in that, they will see Christ in us. Well, listen, Mark, this has been incredible. The series is rocking on Heaven's Door. People can watch it right now on Pure Flix. Thank you so much for giving us your time today. 
Thank you, Billy, so much for spending a few minutes with us. We're so excited and we're excited about the future episodes that you'll be seeing. Well, we're excited to see how this impacts people. Thanks again. Thank you. Have a blessed day.